Studying animal entrails to foretell the future is an Etruscan Roman religious practice, not ancient Egyptian. What do the entrails say? Ancient Egypt did not have leaf blade swords at the time. They had a weapon called kopesh, a sickle-shaped broadsword that had a single slashing edge and made of bronze and not iron. This was the Bronze Age after all. Instead of a blue battle crown, Ramses seems to wear a queen's royal vulture crown. And instead of the Peshent crown for coronation, he seems to wear a queen's modius crown. This reminds me of a Britney Spears music video. Wait, is that good or bad? Why is he smiling? He says he feels no pain, my lord. Then why whip him? Right, and Moses believes everything that slaves say. But then again, the slaves did tell him that he was one of them and that turned out to be true after all. A slave will not have papyrus unless he stole it. You, slave! You! Was Moses so distraught by the news that he's Hebrew that he killed the guards? He's a prince of Egypt and his guards and companions were nearby that also happened to not hear anything. The problem is that Moses is portrayed as a reasonable man, but he just kills the guards on a whim. Ancient Egyptians used headrests for sleeping, not pillows. Use of blue-eyed Caucasian actors with lots of fake tan to portray what will be more like characters resembling Middle Easterners. This reminds me of when Caucasian actors played Chinese and black roles. The 60s called and they want their whitewashing back. This was treason. How was it treason? He just admitted he knew. That wasn't an admission. Simply did not want her arm lopped off. I saw it in his eyes. He does not believe the story. I don't want to believe it. You want to believe it because it's an opportunity to be rid of him, which I always wanted. I didn't say exiled. I said dead. Hold on. If no one believes the story, That's then true. why banish Moses? We also don't know why Ramses' mother wants to kill Moses. Is it because she is the only one that believes he's a Hebrew? Or is it something else? The Great Sphinx of Giza appears looking very much like it does today. However, at the time of Moses, the Sphinx would likely still have its nose, although we do not know exactly when it was lost. Did Moses' family get banished too, or did they just come to say goodbye? When Moses returns to Egypt, we never see his mother and sister again, nor does he look for them or mentions them. They are just gone without any explanation. We see all the horses riding away, but then there are two riders escorting the wagon. Well, that was convenient that Moses got two horses when he needed them. God works in mysterious ways indeed. Way to go Katniss, that was an amazing shot. In the wedding scene, a beautiful cactus can be seen, but cactuses did not exist in Egypt until a few hundred years ago. What's the most important thing in your life? You are. Where would you rather be? No one. And when would you leave me? Never. Proceed. These are really silly lines in the movie. If this is how they do their thing, to be safe they should sign a 50 page contract on what they can and cannot do to each other, then afterwards they can proceed to do 50 shades of grey on each other. Moses in Egypt came after the construction of the pyramids about 700 years later. Don't want to discuss my tomb per se. By the way, Giza pyramids were not built by slaves, neither Hebrew nor Egyptian. God or angel says He won't be at peace until you do. Actually, he was peaceful living with his family for the past nine years before God talked to him. What God really meant was that he was going to annoy the hell out of Moses until he checks on the Hebrews. What kind of God tells a man to leave his family? She's joking, right? What you expect? They're Egyptians. They should be treated as Egyptians. They should have the same rights. They should be paid for their work or... You must set them free. 
What is this talk about them being Egyptians and to be set free? During all his life, he never cared for the Hebrew slaves, and now he is their savior? The movie fails to show Moses' transformation and connection with the Hebrew people. Listen, from an economic standpoint alone, what you're asking is problematic to say the least. Ramses sounds like an accountant. At this point he has me believing he can pull up some spreadsheets showing the kingdom's balance and how freeing the slaves will diminish the overall shareholder value by at least 10%. No. Stirrups were invented several hundred years later. I want Moses dead. Did you hear me? Yes. And go. And <clears throat> At the barn, Moses never told Ramses that he had a family so he could not know about his wife and son. If by family Ramses meant Moses' mother and sister, they just disappeared when Moses was banished early in the movie, we never see them again and I guess neither did Moses or Ramses. Archers firing from horseback did not exist until the Iron Age, which was about a thousand years after the exodus. It seems like the rules for slaves were very slack back in the days. They come and go as they please to train with bows, swords and riding horses. Also, wouldn't they be so exhausted of working 18 hour days to do anything else? I do know a few things about military action still. If you're not going to listen to me, then why did you take me away from my family? I didn't. You did. You Whoa, me. hold on a second. For the record, Mr. God, let's get this straight. You won't be at peace until you do. What kind of God tells a man to leave his family? God did take him away from his family. Case closed. For now, you can watch. There is this whole 20 minutes of movie showing Moses training the Hebrews to fight guerrilla warfare, and then God comes along and goes, I'm bored, I'll just throw down some plagues. Making the previous 20 minutes of the movie completely irrelevant. I was expecting a crocodile to chomp this guy. It didn't happen. You still don't think of them as yours, do you? He is right in that the movie does a poor job of making a connection between Moses and the Hebrews while at the same time showing him helping them. It is all very confusing, even God agrees with me. I'm not negotiating anymore. That's not why I'm here. But then that's exactly what he does. This has nothing to do with you and I. Lies. This is far beyond that. This is about Egypt's survival, do you understand? More lies. Sunset. After that it will be too late. What will be too late? You protect your child. You protect your child tonight. Mm, missing a piece of information here. Give the poor man some details, Moses. What exactly will happen? How do you protect the children? Moses could have told Ramses to slaughter a lamb to save his child, but instead he only told the Hebrews. Tell everyone to slaughter a lamb. Mark their doors and their doorposts tonight with its blood. Why? Pity the lambs if I'm wrong. If I'm right, we will bless them for eternity. Besides, Moses doesn't seem to be sure what he's doing, so how did he come up with the idea of sacrificing lambs? Root! Is down the western coast. Or we go through the mountains. The mountains? Why? Why don't we take that route? We can, but so can Ramses. Early in the movie, Moses talks to a traveler. He didn't really say he crossed the sea. He could have came from a boat. And Moses has no idea of how far it is to the sea, yet with all his military tactics, training and experience says to go that way. 
No wonder that later he curled up like a baby. It's ridiculous that the sword made an unshading sound when Moses pulled it out of the water and sand. So, one chariot topples, which causes a chain reaction that results in landslides in different places throughout the mountain road. It is quite unbelievable, but it didn't really matter anyway, because during the chase, it looks like the Egyptians didn't lose any chariots at all. Why is this horse by itself? You'll never make it back. Moses is a military general, so strategically he'd ride to the shore and let the waves kill Ramses. There was no need for him to face up Ramses other than for dramatic effect. Everyone dies, but for Ramses who manages to swim out of the sea wearing a full combat armor. God is an annoying vengeful little kid, but he's also forgiving. Take the fucking map, man. I'm, I'm not playing head games, man. If anyone's playing head games, you're playing head games, but I'm not playing head games. No, I don't have the map. We gave it back to you after map check yesterday. You've always had the map. <laughs>